This is a lesson on the different classifications of numbers, which is basically a big word for just saying that numbers are part of families and numbers have different homes depending on what kind of number they are, just, just kind of like people do. So I'll start by talking about myself a little bit. A lot of the time when I meet someone new, they ask me where I live and you don't give them your specific address. I don't tell them 202 Calvert Drive because that doesn't really mean much, but I do tell them that I live in Cupertino and that's probably the most specific name I use to describe where I live. On the number side of things, uh, the most basic number is the number one, and the most specific descriptor of where it lives is called the natural numbers. And the natural numbers are all the numbers that you learn when you're a baby, like one, two, three, four, five, six, and on and on and on. The natural numbers are also sometimes called the counting numbers because they're the first numbers you learn how to count. Back to me real fast. Although I do live in Cupertino, Cupertino is part of Santa Clara County, which means that since I'm a resident of Cupertino, I'm also a resident of Santa Clara County. But the reverse isn't necessarily true because not everyone that lives in Santa Clara County lives in Cupertino. So you have to be careful going back and forth because numbers are the exact same way. If we get a tiny bit less specific, what we come to are called the whole numbers. All of the natural numbers are part of the whole numbers, just like all the people who live in Cupertino also live in Santa Clara County. But there is one whole number that is not a natural number, and that is the number zero. And so when we're talking about the whole numbers, we're talking about the numbers that start with zero and start going up by one, two, three, on and on and on. Taking a step further back in my situation, Cupertino and Santa Clara are both parts of California. Again, not everyone that lives in California lives in Santa Clara or even more specifically Cupertino, but if you live in Cupertino or Santa Clara, you're definitely living in California. Taking a step out in terms of the numbers brings us to what are called the integers. Again, not all of the integers are whole numbers and natural numbers, but all of the whole numbers and natural numbers are integers. But the integers now also add in the negatives, negative one, negative two, negative three, and on and on and on in the negative direction as well. Take any other step back with me. Uh, I think most people are aware that California is a state that is part of the US. So I am also a resident of the United States. Again, everyone that's a resident of California is also a resident of the US, but not everyone that lives in the US lives in California. That trend continues with the numbers, and as we take another step back, we come to what are called the rational numbers. The new addition to the club now are fractions, which means we could have things like negative one-half, or one-third, or three-fourths, or maybe eleven-sevenths. The list becomes a little bit harder to write, but again, you can imagine that there's a lot of different kinds of numbers in here. Still true that all of the previous numbers we mentioned are rationals, but not all of the rationals, specifically these fractions, are part of the numbers in the integers, whole numbers, or natural numbers. Now that we've taken where I live all the way out to the fact that I live in America, we probably shouldn't leave out the people that live in different countries, but they're in a different group. People that live in Japan or France if you're a resident of one of these countries, you're not living in America, so you're part of a separate group. There's a similar thing going on with the numbers, and there's a separate group of numbers that don't fit with the rest of these, and those are called the irrational numbers. The irrational numbers are all the numbers that can't be described as fractions. There's a lot of different numbers like this, but some of the ones you might have heard of are called pi, 
which is 3.14159, and that's as much as I know, but it does go on forever. And there is no way you can represent pi with a fraction to make it the exact right decimal. Another one is the square root of 2, which is something like 1.4. But again, the decimal goes on forever, and there's no fraction that can represent it. And these irrational numbers are their own group. They are not part of the rationals or natural or whole numbers. They are not related. They're separate. But I don't like ending the story on separatism. We, regardless of what country you live in, are all residents of the planet Earth. And numbers are the same way. They're happy, they like to be together, and they all live under the banner of what are called the real numbers. They're irrational, and the rational numbers to come together, and with them combined, they form the real numbers. To review, the most specific group of numbers are the natural numbers, and they are one, two, three, so on and so forth. The next step out is the whole numbers, and we simply add zero to the group. Everything else stays the same. When we come to the integers, and that's when we add the negatives. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Next come the rational numbers, and the rational numbers give us the fractions. The irrational are separate to this, and they are the numbers that can't be fractions, like pi and the square root of two. And the real numbers brings the rational and the irrational together in one big set.